welcome to part four of my series in uh, the beginner's guide to colour genetics in budgery cars. In the series so far we've looked at thing, terms such as um, the um, gene, the alleles, um, we've learned that birds can be heterozygous or homozygous and we've learned that a bird can reflect its um, uh, colour type, its phenotype, can be different from its genotype. In part two, we learnt about the dominant and um, recessive genes and how a bird can be split for a recessive um, colour. And then in the last part of the series, we looked at the um, semi-dominant or co-dominant um, uh, genes, such as the spangle, uh, where a, a bird, there's an intermediate stage between the dominant and recessive type. And in fact, that the... the um, uh, genotype and the phenotypes are reflected so there is um, three different phenotypes and three different genotypes. If you're still unsure about any of this or indeed unsure how to use the, um, the Punnett square then please do go back and have a look at the um, previous um, videos in this series and just bring yourself back up to speed. But so far we've just looked at a single um, allele. So we've looked at, say, the um, green and blue series birds. So how we can predict the outcome of a um, green split blue or a blue bird um, pairing. Or we've looked at the pairings of a um, the co-dominant um, series birds, such as the uh, spangle. So, but we've not looked at where we've had a mixture of alleles. And of course, our birds are made up of a whole range of genes, both in terms of colour and variety. So what I'm going to do in this um, video is show you how we can use the Punnett square in order to predict more complex outcomes. So let's take, for example, a, a blue um, single factor spangle uh, cockbird crossed with a um, grey green split blue henbird and we'll assume that the grey green is a single factor grey so it's only containing one of the uh, grey genes. How would we predict the outcome of these two birds? Well let's nip over to the computer and we'll take a look. So here we are back at the computer and this time before we move on to look at the um, Punnett square what I've done is I've written out the various combinations for the uh, two birds. So along the top are the, is the pairing. So we've got a blue series uh, single factor spangle cock paired with a uh, grey, sorry, paired with a green split blue single factor grey hen. So the possible combinations then in terms of genotype. So the cock's um, genotype, we know that it's blue so it must contain two of the um, recessive uh, blue alleles and it's a single factor spangle so it contains one of the um, dominant spangle um, alleles and one of the recessive spangle alleles um, or the wild type uh, non-spangle alleles. The hen's genotype then it could, we know that it's split for blue so it contains one of the um, non-mutated um, uh, alleles for the um, blue gene so and one of the recessive blue alleles and then it contains one of the um, alleles for the dominant grey uh, gene and one for the recessive or the wild type um, alleles. So let's have a look at the um, combinations once we add the missing genes. So clearly we haven't identified the spangle genes in the hen and we haven't identified the green genes, uh, the grey genes in the, in the cock. So the cock's genotype then if we include those will be um, two alleles for the recessive blue um, one analyst for the uh, dominant spangle and one for the wild type and both wild type alleles for the grey. The hen's genotype then is one of the wild type um, alleles for the blue which makes it a green bird and one of the, rec the recessive um, mutated alleles is for blue. It then contains one um, grey alleles and one of the wild type non grey alleles and then two wild type uh, uh, spangle alleles so it co doesn't contain any of the um, mutated dominant spangle um, alleles. So the possible combinations then, let's just re recap that. So the possible combinations, for well, the bluebird it can, the only difference between the two possible outcomes um, 
outcomes is the spangled gene because it will either pass on in both cases it will pass on a um, the recessive blue gene and the wild type um, uh, non-mutated uh, gene for the grey factor um, so the only one that's different will be the dominant spangle one so you can see there are two possible outcomes as it will be a um, recessive um, blue allelis, a dominant spangle allelis and the um, non, the wild type um, grey allelis and once again it will be the um, the blue allelis, the non-mutated wild type um, allelis for the spangle and the non-mutated wild type allelis for the grey. Now the hen's slightly different because in this case we've now got four possible um, combinations. So we've got the um, allelis with the wild type um, green uh, gene the and a uh, grey uh, mutated gene, so the dominant grey gene and the um, non-mutated um, spangle allelis or we could have a um, recessive or with the mutated blue allelis with a non-mutated um, grey allelis and a non-mutated spangle allelis or we could have a um, non-mutated wild type um, blue allelis making the bird green the non-mutated um, grey allelis means it doesn't contain any grey factor and the non-mutated spangle allelis with the um, wild type so it doesn't contain any spangle and the final combination is that it could have a um, mutated um, recessive blue allelis and the dominant um, grey allelis and the non-mutated wild type spangle allelis so those are the four poss possible outcomes for the hen this will mean that the um, Punnett square will need to look slightly different because it will need to reflect all four of the hen's possible outcomes. So let's have a look at what that looks like on the Punnett square. So here is the Punnett square for that um, pairing, and as we said, the um, blue single factor. Oh, it's about spangle wrong there. Let's just re rechange the word spangle. So the the blue single factor um, spangle cock has two possible. Um, uh, gene types or genotypes that it can pass on whereas the single factor grey greens split blue hen has four possible um, genotypes that it can pass on. In order to do it we're going to do it exactly the same as we did before but and we'll bring down each of the um, the uh, analyses for the various genes um, at a time. This is why I added the um, the non-mutated wild type genes for each of the birds that weren't reflected in the uh, original genotype. So in this one here we'll bring down the uh, small blue um, so the the mutated blue gene and a um, from the cockbird and the wild type non-mutated blue gene for the hen and then we've got the um, mutated spangle gene with the non-mutated spangle gene from the hen and then we've got the um, non-mutated grey gene and the grey factor gene for, from the hen. So that bird there therefore would be, so it's going to be a blue split blue single factor, um, sorry a green split blue single factor a grey. So it will be a grey green a single factor spangle. So let's move, do the same thing over here and once again we're going to bring down the non-mutated, sorry the mutated blue gene and the non-mutated green gene from there with the um, wild type spangle, wild type spangle gene and then we've got the wild type grey gene and the dominant um, mutated grey gene. So this bird here is going to be just a um, grey green uh, split blue um, bird. This one here we'll do exactly the same. I'll just repeat through these and then we'll have a look at what the possible outcomes are going to be. So I'll be back once I filled in the rest of the squares. 
Well, I've now completed the rest of the Punnett square. I hope you um, can see what I've done and are able to do the same um, with yours. So what's the possible outcomes of um, this blue single factor spangled cock crossed with a single factor grey green um, split blue hen? Well, possible outcomes then. If we start in the top one, the one we did earlier, so the uh, top left corner. So there we've got a grey green um, split blue single factor spangle. The one next one across, so this one here, um, there we've got a um, grey green split blue bird, and this one here, we've got a blue single factor spangle, and this one here, we've just got a blue bird. Uh, the next one down, this one here, we've got a green split blue single factor spangle, and the next one down, we've just got a a, gro a green split blue bird. Uh, the one down here we've got a grey single factor spangle and of course the grey as we all know is just the um, the blue um, with the grey green so it's a blue series grey in effect. So, so we've got a grey single factor spangle and over here, this one over here we've just got a grey. So of those we've got a possible outcome of that pairing of um, eight different types of bird out of the nest. So eight completely different um, varieties of bird from um, one pairing. So we can see it can all get quite complicated and very interesting. Um, I hope you understand how we do the do them. Clearly if the blue had also contained a, a grey um, gene then we'd probably have had to add another couple of Punnett squares along and we get even more possible uh, combination outcomes. Um, so there we go, we now know how to do um, use the Punnett square to predict outcomes for um, uh, multiple genotypes. I'll now um, finish there and we'll go back. So there we are, I hope you found that interesting and now understand how we can use the Punnett square to predict the outcome of multiple um, uh, gene types, so multiple um, varieties and uh, colour types in the budgery car. Obviously the more and more you add, the more and more complex it gets, and the larger and larger the Punnett square, and the more variety of possible outcomes there are. But it's always interesting to um, work through those and take some practice. Anyway, that's about all we've got time for in this particular um, video. In the next video we're going to look at a particular type of um, inheritance and that's the inheritance through the chromosome that controls the sex, so the sex um, chromosome. And in there there's a particular interesting because the, slight, the, the way the um, dominance and um, recessive genes work in that particular chromosome is slightly different from all the others. Uh, you may often hear people talking about something being um, sex linked. And that's what we're going to look at in the next video. I do hope you'll join me. And in the meantime, if you did enjoy this video um, or any others in the series, please give us a big thumbs up, a big like. And if you want to um, see more of them, then why not subscribe? Please feel free to comment and share this video. Thank you. Goodbye.